going to go to the shortest of sticks. Yeah, Typically, they can be made with a small sock filled with lead or with gunpowder, and then progressively with a lead or an iron plate. This one has an iron plate in it. Uh, they can be long. You'll see, like in the Civil War, people use longer ones, or sailors used to use longer ones. Um, but they were typically associated, they became smaller and smaller, very heavy, and they became associated with hooliganism and with uh, crime. So that was like primary weapon in 1920 to beat up rich people and take their money. That was your mugging tool. Um, so as a result, there was a period in history in the 20s to the 40s where they were so widely used by the Irish that when the Irish became the predominant population percentage of police in, let's say, like New York City, for example, it carried over. And so you had a lot of police using that as a typical backup weapon. Um, but it, it, as short as it is, this doesn't do much on the body. It's, you're not really going to use it against the leg. So you might use it against the hands or the arms to get in, but this is primarily neck and up. So when you use a blackjack or a sap as a cop, you start having a lot of traumatic brain injuries, right? And so because of that and because of the reputation with hooliganism, they became banned. Cops weren't allowed to carry them. This is, uh, I believe this is banned in more states than switchblades in the U.S. Like this is that illegal. In Canada, they're specifically mentioned in the criminal code. Blackjacks, saps, uh, slapjacks. So they're totally illegal. Uh, but it's the equivalent of your grandmother's sock full of quarters, right? That's what it is. So it doesn't look like much. Uh, when they're short, because they're trying to maximize length, normally you're just going to grab the bottom of the tier like that, and they usually have a strap on it. Some of the straps are smaller. You'll see it's just for like two fingers, and you're really allowing it to go. So there's two ways we can use it. We can use the edge. Again, it doesn't look like much, but that's going to break your hand with a, a small tap. Um, so we're going to either use it for the hand, we're going to use it for cutting the brow. So that's your primary, and that's more comfortable for most people because you're using the primary finger edge, your knife cutting edge. And then the second way of using which we're going to look at is the actual slap. And the slap is, even on the leg, it's horrible. There's a lot of pain anywhere on the body, but on the neck, mandibular angle, you're going to knock somebody down, back of the head. But that's a different mechanic, so we're going to look at that. Uh, I have one real one in circulation that's going to be going. That's with lead. Just go super soft because it destroys you. These are made with foam. So again, you're not going crazy hard because even with foam, it's not so good. And then to add into the mix, I'll give you the equivalent from the Maori, which is the patu. And the patu is normally made out of wood uh, with obsidian flakes or just polished obsidian or stone. And that was a, a, a primary hand-to-hand -hand weapon for Maori warriors, right? So again, same deal. It's wood. It looks a little bit odd at first, and when you first hold it, you don't think it's going to be strong. Sometimes they'll have a thong or a rope around it, and they'll spin it. They'll spin it and whip it, uh, which exceeds our population capacity today. So, right? so the first thing we're going to look at is how we can address the hand. So if I have Ian up here for a second. So if I'm working, right, with the, with the foam one, you can tap with the patu or the actual blackjack. I would not recommend it. We're going to rotate this around so you have, uh, you have an idea. But I want to see the difference between kind of lightly slapping the hand which is kind of a weird mechanical angle, but it's like a paintbrush, right? Like, bam, that kind of an angle, versus hooking, almost like an inside hammer fist or an inside block. Anywhere on the hand, right? Bam, that's a bad angle. Arm is going to work. Bone is going to work. Or I could just cuff over and, and start to reach towards the second hand. We're not even going to think of the head yet. I just want you to get precision. Think of ways you can slap, hack and cut, hook over. You can use the pommel. Right? This is also iron here, right? Metal. I can come through, or I can just bypass the whole affair and go into all the same clinches we were doing before. Once we have aim, we're going to start to look at how we can affect the head. If you're using foam, again, you can smack a little bit like that. You'll get a little bit of a whack. But once you've had it 20 times, you can go a little bit harder. Even this, not so comfortable. And if I start to hit with the edge, you can still see what it does to the hand. You still break a bone with Mac, yeah? So gentle, soft. That's the noise you want. <laughs> Maybe switch to forearms. Your piano career may be done. Um, even that, right, with lead, it hurts right here, anywhere in the hand, super destructive. And you don't need a lot of distance. Now we're going to look at the slapping mechanic. Slapping mechanic is different, right? It's exactly like slapping with a hand, right? Same thing as the, it's the medial line of the hand. The difference is when I have elongation from a tool, there's more leverage. So my grip will tend to fail here, which is fine. That's what the tether is for, right? So I can use, I'll use your thigh, right? That kind of a shot. Look how small the mechanic is, right? Bad. So will it go through a can of the douche coat? It will. Will it go through your forearm muscle? It will. It doesn't take much. You see a mark and that's the lightest possible slap. So if you went, bam, all the way through, 
with full mass is going to be a bad shot. Anywhere, yeah, anywhere on the body is good. But primarily we're looking to destroy the stance so I can get in and attack the face. I really want to get necking up, you know, whatever. I could do crotch, it's all up to you. So we can mix now between the slapping hit and the cutting hit. Back slaps absolutely can work. It particularly taught up against the chin to open up and to hit. But it's going to be specifically the understanding of each of those two mechanics and the free play from one to the other, right? I might slap in, and some, believe me guys, a stab will use your stomach because that's the more durable. This is bad, right? Very bad, very bad, horrible, yeah? So any type of slap, cut, or stab is good now. I just want to play with my mechanics and see how I would get into the